So for those who've actually noticed this in the background, yes, it is intentional. Nas Illmatic, one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. <laughs> This is the Galaxy S23 and the S23 Plus. Two legitimate flagship phones with a ton of flagship features, but oftentimes overshadowed by the way flashier Galaxy S Ultra. Now, I've always been in the mindset that despite the Ultra being a very cool and enticing device, the regular Galaxy S lineup more often than not provided better value pound for pound in comparison, and therefore would be a more practical recommendation for most consumers. That was very much the case last year with the S22 lineup, so when I got my hands on the newest variants, I was eager to see if Samsung made these phones as beefed up as their predecessors Accessors, and whether or not they did anything different to make them more appealing within the smartphone market. Well, I've been testing out both the S23 and the S23 Plus for about a week now, so I'm putting this review together to go over the key components and features of these phones, as well as talk about how my experience has been to ultimately help you decide if either of these phones are worth it. And let's start off in the area in which both of these phones probably saw the least amount of change, and that's their physical design. And I put it that way because both of these phones have around 95% of the same design language as last year, as they maintain the Galaxy form factor that's been in place for a while now, which consists of a well put together glass on glass build connected together by a color matched aluminum frame. Now you do get some new colors to help with the differentiation like this new lavender color that I have on the S23. It's well executed in it that it has a nice sheen of light, especially with the matte finish and it's not overdone where the phone looks tacky or cartoonish, it still maintains a very high end premium look. Now that said, I still say that Samsung's phantom black colorway is my all time favorite. It's not new, but man, the dark stealthy look you get here is so nice, I'm still in awe of it every time I see it. See it. Now, some other minor changes that make these distinctly S23s is the camera housing, or in this case, the lack thereof. So unlike last year, the rear cameras are arranged in a free-floating design, which no doubt is a way to align them visually with the way the cameras are set up on the Ultra. It does make for a much cleaner look, but with the Samsung logo being blended into this matte glass and nothing else really there, the phone could come off a bit too minimal to where it looks boring. I personally like the ultra minimalist look, but I can understand if people think it looks generic and it kind of lacks that panache or something signature to make it a bit more distinct. Distinct. Also, Samsung did a minor modification to the frame this year as it's not as curved as it was before on the side, so it is a bit easier to hold and a bit more fine from a look standpoint. And of course, the most obvious difference between the S23 and the S23 Plus is going to be their size. The regular S23 provides users with a more compact body and a 6.1 inch display, while the S23 Plus is a bit larger and boosts the display size up to 6.6 .6 inches. Now, one week later, I find myself gravitating more towards the regular S23 as it's a bit easier to use and navigate, and I feel as though I still get a very pleasing and immersive user experience with the edge-to-edge -edge display, but I've been pleasantly surprised by how comfortable the Plus has been as well. It's noticeably way more comfortable to hold than my iPhone 14 Pro Max and more than adequate for anyone who requires a large display. Now, one flaw that is in no way exclusive to the S23 or the S23 Plus is their fragility. There's really nothing worse than making the plunge at a new phone as beautiful as either of these only to have them scratched up or cracked, which unfortunately is super easy to do. That's where channel sponsor Case Fight comes in to save the day with their new impact and ultra impact case for the S23 series, and man, it's no joke. The high impact case is equipped with Caseify's EcoShock impact absorption technology that provides your phone with ultimate drop cushioning, even from drops as high as 11 and a half feet. It has these reinforced corners that enables force from drops to more evenly distribute tension, ultimately allowing for greater elasticity as well as superior abrasion resistance to help keep your phone as ultra safe as possible. Caseify also have tempered glass screen protectors for the S23 to help mitigate any damage to the display. And after putting both on, I thought to myself, why not put Case Device claims to the test. So I took the phone to my second story window, mustered up the courage to trust Case Device not to ruin my brand new phone, and dropped it onto the concrete pavement. Three, two, one. Now that sounded bad, but when I went down to see the damage, I'm happy to say the phone is completely fine. I am glad that I put the screen protector on because it definitely saved the phone from potential damage to the screen, but I'm happy to say it's still pristine after the test. And what's great about Caseify is that you can get this and any of their other cases in any of their super popular designs, or you could even customize your own using their customizer tool, which is pretty great. If you guys are interested in checking out the high impact case by Caseify or any of their other fantastic cases or accessories, use my special link in the description and you'll get 15% off your order. Get both peace of mind and a stylish look. Check out Case to Find today. Okay, next, let's talk about performance on the S23 and the S23 Plus, and let's start with the display. 
Both are rocking class-leading Full HD Samsung AMOLED panels that perform fantastic. Content comes off razor sharp, you get bright saturated colors, great contrast with those true blacks, and both can get pretty bright, especially when viewing HDR content. They both are also equipped with Samsung's in-display fingerprint reader for security, which continues to be, in my opinion, the best out there. And it looks as though the sensor is larger on the S23 lineup, as you can see the prompt moving around when setting up a fingerprint, which is great. And it's still, to me, one of the fastest, most reliable, and safe biometric security systems you can get on any phone right now. Both also clock in at a high refresh rate of 120 hertz for that silky smooth UI navigation. And again, Samsung does this really well. You don't get any noticeable throttling of the refresh rate, and it really makes both the S23 and the S23 Plus joy to use. Now, up to this point, there isn't anything here that I would deem as new, as all of the specs and features I just talked about are pretty common across the Galaxy S lineup, but where you do start to see a difference with the S23 and the S23 Plus is with its processor. Both phones are equipped with the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip for top-end performance, but Samsung did say that the processor, though made by Qualcomm, does have some special modifications specifically for the Galaxy lineup. Now, how much customization was done here, I'm not exactly too sure, but it's nice that there is more concerted effort around having more quote-unquote in-house modifications notifications, as this oftentimes leads to better performance and better efficiency. And one week later, I will say that general performance on the S23 and the S23 Plus has been really good. Everything is fast and lag-free, and it may be psychosomatic, but I do feel as though spec-intensive gaming is a bit smoother than before. It's always done well, but I feel as though it's silkier than ever this year. Now, when it comes to battery life on the S23 and the S23 Plus, they do have slightly larger batteries than last year. Nothing over the top, but they do seem to perform better, which may be a reflection of that gained efficiency with the modification to the processor. The S23 Plus has always been reliable enough to get you through a full day, even with heavy use, and I'm happy to say so far the S23 can do the same. This wasn't always the case as my experience with the S22's battery was just okay, so it's encouraging to see that the smallest Galaxy, at least for the here and now, can give you a user experience free of any charge anxiety. And I think a big win for consumers this year is that Samsung finally made the right decision to sunset the use of Exynos chips for certain Galaxy models. It was pretty clear that there were performance differences, almost always in the negative for those who had phones with the Exynos processor, so it's good to see that all recipients of the new S23 lineup will have same access to stellar performance. And last, let's talk about the most important area of performance for the Galaxy S23 and the S23 Plus, and that, of course, is camera quality. Now, both phones are equipped with the exact same hardware and computational photography settings, so you're not going to see any differences in quality between the two. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that this is probably the biggest area of differentiation between the regular S23s and the S23 Ultra, as the latter has new sensors across the board, with particular note to its main sensor, as it now boasts a pretty ridiculous 200 megapixel sensor. Now, sad to say, the camera hardware on the regular S23s is essentially the same as last year's, which could be underwhelming for some, but the good news is the system from last year was already pretty great. You get a 50 megapixel main sensor with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 10 megapixel three times optical zoom. And when it comes to still image photography one week later, so far I'm impressed. When shooting in daylight, the images come out looking fantastic. They're sharp with good colors and they're more natural looking, which is nice as Samsung in the past did kind of overdo it with the processing. The selfies also look really good and it does particularly well with the portrait mode shots. And this is pretty close to the quality I'm seeing with the S23 Ultra. Now where you may notice some quality drops is in low light shots. It is a bit noisy in the dark areas of the photos, and shutter lag is still an issue making the camera sensitive to motion blur, but it's not something I would categorize as overtly bad in my opinion. Now, when it comes to video, you do get access to the updated 8K video now in 30 frames per second, which is nice. You don't get that heavy crop like before, so it's a bit easier to use, and the video does come off noticeably sharper than last year. It's not as good as the iPhones, but the quality here is pretty good, all things considered. So one week later, I have to say, my experience with the S23 and the S23 Plus has been generally really positive, despite these phones being very familiar. I would say there's not much of a reason to upgrade if you have last year's models, and even if you have something older, it may be prudent to wait it out a bit longer to see if Samsung comes out with something more exciting next year. Now, I do still think that the regular S23s provide better value over the Ultra for most consumers, particularly the standard S23. This phone starts off at $799 US, which is significantly less than the Ultra, and I feel as though you're getting a ton with that price tag. The S23 Plus is also a strong choice, though I'm not sure why it's $200 more than the regular S23. I don't think you're getting anything noteworthy to justify that big of a price difference, and at that point, it may be better to just pony up the extra dollars and go for the Ultra. Jason's take, I think it would have been better to price the Plus at $899, that price difference I can understand, and it still separates it enough from the Ultra to make it a clear buying choice. But hey, that's just me, and I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the S23 and the S23 Plus? Do you think these are better phones to go with over the Ultra? Or are you in camp Ultra or nothing? Curious to get your thoughts? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Now, in case you are curious to learn more about the S23 Ultra or last year's S22 lineup, check out these reviews here so you can be as informed as possible.